Hey everyone and welcome back to another AR tutorial for the Unity game engine and we'll be working once again with the Vuforia engine plugin and this time we'll be adding some custom images and tracking databases to our project so that we can see how to use the Unity project integrated with the Vuforia developer portal. So inside of the same Unity project that we set up previously, we can very easily add the Vuforia databases to this project with some custom image targets. To load the correct web page for this, you can just go to the image target that we already have. And over here, if you click on the add target button, this will actually take you to the Vuforia web page. Now, if you haven't already created an account here, or if you are not logged in, then just go ahead and create a completely free account or log into an account that you do have, and you should be returned to this web page, which is simply the starting page if you were to click on the Vuforia engine. When you've taken those steps, just head over to the develop option, and this will take you to the developer portal. And we'll need to do two things just here. So the first thing that we need to do is to click the get development key button. So this is the free to use option and perfect for testing. You can check the license restrictions just here if you wanted to know more. The first thing that we need to do is give this a license name and just tick the checkbox down here to confirm the agreement and then press the confirm button. And we need to do this because we're now adding a custom target manager which won't have a license applied to it in the same way that the example content from the Vuforia package already did. So if you tried building the project without having the development license key uh, in the engine that we'll use a little bit later, then you wouldn't get any results happening when you're trying to track things. So once you have that confirmed, back in the license manager area, you should see the new key that you've just created. If that doesn't appear straight away, give it a few seconds and refresh the page a few times, and this should then all appear for you. Now at the moment, this doesn't actually tell us anything. We need to click anywhere on this line of information just here, and this will take us into the Vuforia key. Now you can just click on the license key below here and it will say that it's copied that to the clipboard for you make a note of this somewhere paste it into notepad or something as you will need this a little bit later back in the unity engine now that we have that done though we need to create our image database and this is going to be the custom trackable images that we want to use in the project so select the target manager and just here you can see that i already have a database from some previous tests that i've done but what we want to do is you probably don't have anything here at the moment is go to the add database button at the top and just click that. So again, we want to give the new database a name and we can leave this selected as type device and then just press the create button. Now, if we go down and select the new database, we want to then click add target. And for now, we're just going to stick with the single image. So this is just going to be another image target similar to what we were working with in the previous tutorial. And we'll be moving on to more interesting topics like custom 3D object tracking in the future. So the first thing we want to do is choose a file. So this will be something you've downloaded in either a JPEG or PNG form, and it needs to be either 24-bit color, red, green, blue, or 8-bit grayscale. Now, if you do get to the end of this and you have an error cropping up saying it doesn't quite meet the file format, what I would recommend doing is just doing a Google search for something like Vuforia tracking image, which is exactly where I've got my image from, just because there are a collection of free images available for testing and things, which have already been formatted correctly to meet these requirements. And if you're not too sure how to use Photoshop to get the correct export settings and things like that, this could just save you a little bit of time just for prototyping. So I've just browsed to my desktop and added the uh, example QR code image, which is just a set of rocks. And like I said, that came from a generic Google search. We then need to give it a width and do note that this says that it's calculating the units in meters. So this is expecting you to have something like an A4 piece of paper printed out. You'd want to measure how big the actual image is on that bit of paper, most likely in centimeters, and then put that here. So I'm going to assume that the image that I would have, if I were to print this out, of course, I'll be just using this on the screen, but I'd say it's going to be something like 20 centimeters. So I'm going to put in 0.2 here, and that will be the width for the image. And then we can just give this a name uh, and I'll just call this one rocks. So if that done, that is everything ready to go. This can be the image that we use in this database. So we're going to press the add button down here, let it add that database, uh, and then we can get some information about this. So the first thing I wanted to point out is that we have the rating system. So we can see this actually gets five stars. Again, like earlier, if the stars start off being 
blank if it hasn't updated then just wait a few moments press the rating button and it will get the information back and it will update that for you it's important to have a higher rated image because that means it's just going to be easier for the application to track the image that you have on screen and if we actually click on the image that we've just imported we can come down here and there's an option at the bottom which is to show features now the features in this context are the small yellow crosshairs that we have appearing and this is essentially everything which would class as a trackable feature in this image is being noted so we can see things like sharp edges very distinctive edges between the light gray and the black holes between the rocks are the bits that this is picking up on if i had a white border or something going around it would pick up on the border of the image very sort of distinct organic patterns are much easier for these things to pick up so in general what you want to try and find is something very organic something with very distinct edges for this to pick up which is why things like qr codes work very well for this because again they have very distinct specific patterns that don't repeat and that's something that you want to avoid is man-made kind of uh, tiling patterns things that you might see which were made to repeat over and over as it doesn't quite then know where to look so this is just some small information on how you can try and get a better uh, augmentable rating here so with that done though i'm just going to click on the view for your tutorial just to go back into our database and that is pretty much everything ready to get this into our unity project so if we just press the download database the all option here or select the database that you want otherwise and just the images that you want if you've selected more than uh, than the one image that we've got here then we can press download database we want this to be set to the unity editor and then press this and download and this is just creating and then downloading a very standard unity assets file so we can see that that's downloaded our unity uh, package sorry rather than assets file, it's a unity package and if you press that and open this back up inside of the unity engine this will give you the standard import options so with the import options we just want to leave all of these selected so it brings everything in we can press import go back over to our image target leave the type as predefined and then in the database we want to drop this down and find the Vuforia tutorial which is the database I've just created and we can see that the image is set to be the rocks so that's brought the rocks image in perfectly I'm just going to right click and reset this so it's a little bit bigger and again we've still got the image and everything set to show this spherical object so the setup and everything is still ready to go the only other thing that we needed to do is come into the AR camera and then down here where we've got the open Euphoria engine configuration button we just want to click on this and this is simply just a quick way to get to the uh, Euphoria config settings and we want to fill in our app license so remember I said to copy that somewhere earlier uh, this is where we're going to need the app license so with that pasted in you're actually ready to go uh, you might think you need to press the add license button that will just open back up in the Euphoria web page and that will take you to the page to create a license if you don't already have one just simply having that text in there is the license ready to go in the package so you don't need to do anything else the only thing we need to do now is to deploy this to the device and just test that everything is working okay so again on the device we can see that uh, i'm just going to load the rock image up from a very standard kind of image viewer as again i don't have the uh, the option to print this out at the moment so with that on screen though we can see that just by very quickly tracking the phone camera over the image it immediately detects the image and spawns the sphere exactly where we'd expect it to be so again without even a single line of code we've been able to get our own images now into the Fuforia project and start tracking a custom database and you can you can go back and start adding a number of different images and things in and seeing how how you can track different objects depending on which image you're looking at but I just wanted to make sure we've got a base understanding of using the Vuforia portal as we're going to be using that a lot more when we get into the 3D scanning as we're going to need to get an application to allow us to actually scan a 3D model to recognize in the viewport. So I'll leave that here for today though. As always, if you enjoy the videos or find these useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps and is greatly appreciated. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.